What's up guys? This is Derek Trader here bringing you Selling Sunset Season 2 Episode 2. Can we keep that intro? No. I like that. Thought it was pretty awesome. Okay. You now have to introduce right. ourselves, I think. But don't say it like that. <laughs> it's Derek Trader and Bethany Trader here bringing you live. We're finally back, haven't done one of these in a while, so I'm pretty excited to show you what episode two of season two looks like. And myself, because I've not seen it. Have you seen it yet? Nope. Have I'm you excited. watched any of these since? No, it's no? been very hard. Has it? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Let's get right into it. <laughs> okay, you're gonna have to cut that all out. <laughs> so we gotta do one Share more thing. Sound and yeah, that's the point. ABC, yeah. always be close. We have it. ABC, always be closing. That actually is a sales term. Good job. <laughs> so have you seen Chriselle since you got here? Sorry, I'm gonna get a drink. Oh, okay. Like, like, the so acting? Is that about she didn't want to hang, so I don't know. I feel like most people are professional enough for that not to be an issue, but is that an issue sometimes? Yeah, sure. I mean, I've had knockout, drag down fights with agents uh, over contracts, negotiations. We're over here in the South. Right, like it's a different dynamic here. Over there in, in California, mm -hmm. it's a high-end, extremely cutthroat, high-end real estate that you're selling to high-end people who are also cutthroat. So it's just all around, to the point, black and white, let's get it done, etc. Whereas here, it's a little bit more laid back. Uh, it's more of a hometown feel, more of a, you know, it's just not as cutthroat. It is still cutthroat, but just not as much. You get a bunch of girls together. That's what I was about to say. Girls, I How feel did, like. Ask any, her. <laughs> she's gonna know. In any kind of profession, I feel like you can always have a little bit of drama when you put a bunch of girls together. So there may be stuff that you don't see behind the scenes. Uh, There's nothing again. wrong with getting a high unsolicited offer, even if they're not interested yet. You never know. He just mentioned something pretty cool. He said, "There's nothing wrong with getting a high end, which means high priced." unsolicited offer even though they may not may, they may not be interested sounds exactly like an off-market potential deal that's happening right now at a networking event on one of their listings it still might work they might be interested they just didn't know mm -hmm. so and it might be what they wanted to do instead of going to market mm -hmm. so it's just interesting to see this side of the world when it comes into the networking group. Mm -hmm. I've definitely learned how to keep my guard up with her. She's taught me how to work in an environment where I zip myself into my little <laughs> bubble. Look at that. Look at that though. To Look at take that. with you. What? Like, like just being aware that not everybody's on your side. Actually, that is a good takeaway. Did you see that? You want to go into that a little further? Well, I think in identifying toxic relationships, like she gave a lot of little good nuggets there when she was talking about how you just kind of have to be aware of the people that are around you. Yeah. And I think a not big everybody thing, likes to see you win. Not everybody likes to see you win. As soon as you start to become successful, there come the haters. It's just like anything else you do. Anytime that you start doing really well, um, it just is what it is. And to be honest with you, not everybody's going to like you. It's okay. You've got to understand that that's part of it. It's part of the territory. And in real estate, there's a bunch of sharks. Not many Nemo's out there. <laughs> that was a good one. Thanks, babe. Deal. We're talking about a million dollar commission here. How did you meet him? Yes, yeah, so I sold him two condos. Um, I want to say three or four years ago. Just a word of advice really quick for any realtor that's wanting to get into business. If you have somebody that wants a, I don't know, Price doesn't really matter. A lower end townhome, house, condo, anything that you might not make a lot of commission on, eventually that client very well may turn into a whale where they're either referring you a lot of business mm -hmm. or they're gonna buy something like this and all of a sudden you're gonna make a really good commission on it. So good for her for following up and following through. It was previously listed with like a baller agent. And if I, fight off the competition, I get the listing, it's gonna take me to a whole other level. What do you think is about to happen? Quick, hurry, you have five seconds to decide. I don't know. Like, what do you mean? Like, what, is she gonna get it or is she not? 
Three, two, one. I need to hear more. <laughs> ah! I think that she is not going to get the listing. Either that girl's just really good at putting on a face and saying, I don't really care what you're saying right now, or she literally doesn't care what she's saying right now, and it's gonna boil down to, what's the highest price you can list it for? <clears throat> yeah. Um, I always call these things wrong, I feel like by sometimes personalities really need to try to click together, and maybe it's just the show. They don't. It just seems kind of awkward. They don't. But, I don't know. Press play. Um, listing appointments, like, is that like the way it goes? You typically, you show up, you introduce each other, you do a walk through the house. Fact is, I have been on listing appointments like that. And yes, it's similar to that. You walk in, you need to have all your materials with you, all your marketing materials that show what you've done with other properties that are similar to this. This is what I normally do. I let the seller kind of dictate how it's gonna go. I don't try to come in and take over the whole appointment. Because the truth is, if I've never met you, I gotta build the rapport first. Mm -hmm. So like she just did, she just came right in. It's a show, but she came right in and just started going into everything. Mm -hmm. Whereas with me, I'm like, hey, there's a dog, your dog Jimmy. That's a great name for a dog. You know, like, <laughs> I don't know. Whatever it is that I can try to connect, I have a dog, her name's Brickley. And then we just, this whole thing, and it's all about the rapport and the first impression. And if you, and I have to read who you are. So if you're a person that has no fluff in you, I'm gonna find out really, really, really quick if you have fluff or not. If there's some fluff in you where you actually wanna talk, you wanna hang out, you wanna, mm -hmm. perfect, you're, you're kinda on my level how I am normally. But if you're one that's like all about the numbers, analytical, I'll find out really quick and then I'll know where to go in which direction. Um, but I think the most important thing is, is to try and build that rapport on the front end and build the rapport to where they like you, mm -hmm. but they like you because they like you and the personality types actually mesh. Yeah. The last little thing that I'm gonna say is, um, I feel like she was like, well, what do you think that your house should be listed at? And then she just was like, I'll tell you what I think. <laughs> Instead of getting like their thoughts on it. Also what Derek said though. Is it empathy? Love doesn't, what did you say? Love doesn't. Love doesn't make you money. Yeah. Ooh. So if you love your house. Can we like <laughs> trademark that? I feel like a lot of times people really love their house and think that it's worth a little bit more. Even if they've not done a thing to it. Mm -hmm. Even if it's, I bought this thing in the 80s. Well, this was the prime time of my life. Um, but the house hasn't the been updated since then. The emotional attachment. Yeah. You get emotionally attached, especially people that flip houses and put a lot of love into the house mm -hmm. and they spend a lot of money and then they fall in love with the fact that they spent the money on the things that they love but yet those things don't make them the extra money they thought that it was gonna make. It's like, hey, we put a lot of money in this and love. It's like, that's great, but. Honestly, you know, it didn't really matter. Didn't matter. It's a detriment to us and it's a detriment to him. He's gotta understand that it's not good for him either. 15 million more Listen, than what's worth. I think Davina, you guys are being really negative. So let me just say, let me just say, if you're listing a price so far over, and I get where he's coming from because the I truth is, is uh, sort of. If you're listing a price so far over, and we know as the professional realtor that you're either not gonna get that price or you're gonna get low balled and it's just gonna piss you off, but a lot of sellers aren't like that. They just wanna list it anyways. And sometimes you list it and it doesn't work and it's sad because you told them on the front end and they don't believe you. But for this, for the agent to say, you guys are being negative, like a seller saying you're being negative, that's one thing. But a an agent who knows better, mm -hmm. who actually understands the market, sees mm -hmm. the market, knows the comps, can prove the comps. That's true. Like, she should know better than that. She's looking at the dollar sign, she's yes. not looking at reality. Yes. Big difference. Mm -hmm. And a lot of sellers look at the dollar signs, not reality. Was that realistic? Mm -hmm. There is a whole lot of nuggets. Yeah, I thought it was realistic. Mm -hmm. Did you? Yeah, I thought it was good. Well, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching another episode of Bethany and Derek Reacts. If there's any other shows or movies you would like for us to react to, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks, guys. Bye. See ya. Perfect! <laughs>